Well, I suppose philosophically speaking, we've got this romantic idea that we've stolen from the French, uh, their concept of terroir, that the landscape has its own personality. All those complexities, uh, distinctive elements within the landscape, the soil, the soil structure, the shape of the hill, the predominant rainfall patterns, the way the wind moves through a landscape, all of those complex natural elements will have an expression in aroma and texture and flavour in the grapes that are grown in those landscapes. So as winemakers we want to be that, those who capture the essence of the landscape rather than impose upon the landscape what we think it should be saying. Canvas terroir, I think it revolves around the, the long sort of mild autumn and that gives you a nice slow ripening time for, for the grapes and they're, they're able to develop their, their flavour and, and character. So I think that's um, the unique, unique aspect of, of canvas terroir. When I drive between here and Lake George, oh, there's a lot more granite towards Lake George and then you arrive to that lake, it's dry most of the time, it's flat. But I find that side a, a lot more spiritual, a lot more kind of attractive. It's, it's, it's actually beautiful over there. Canberra has more sunshine than any other capital except Perth. We have this wonderful sea breeze we call Bateman's Breath, which comes in in summer. So we have cool evenings, followed by warm, hot, dry days. And it's unique climate that you see very rarely in anywhere else in Australia. And when you look at the world, to have that differentiation between cold nights and warm, hot, dry days is what the great wine growing regions of the world are. I was born in the area in 1971 when, when the first vines were planted here and grew up not really knowing about that emerging industry and probably be, first became aware of it hearing Ken Helm talking on the radio and that was my first sort of conscious moment with, with the Canberra district. A lot of the very hard work had been done by the pioneers in terms of trying different areas, different varieties, uh, different practices and so on. And a lot of those hard lessons had borne fruit in terms of when big investment came in. Well, this being a cool area for grape growing, and particularly in the 70s, they thought that the only places you could grow grapes were either in the Hunter Valley, Barossa Valley, or, or out at Griffith. It had to be warm. And so for us to even dare to think that we could grow grapes around Canberra, it was something which they thought were all mad. I think in the earliest days, there was understandably a certain amount of, um, maybe suspicion's too strong a word, but curiosity about the wine industry here and those early pioneers like my dad, John Kirk, Ed Garik and Ken Helm, uh, Roger Harris a little bit later, the carpenters at Lark Hill. You know, what are these crazy scientists doing out there, you know? And what do they mean by charging $10 for a bottle of Riesling when we can get something from the Clare Valley for the same price? That's totally changed and what we've seen emerge in the last 15 years is a, a great, might be a cliche, but a synergy between the people of Canberra and the Canberra Wine District and I think there is a lot of pride now in, uh, in the Canberra community about what we do with our wine here. So uh, I started off uh, in the production sense with working for the Hardy Wine Company and that was under Alex Mackay. I started at the lower run as a, as a seller hand, even working in the effluent system, but I, I just loved every moment of it and I really got to see a lot of fruit come through because we, we did around two and a half thousand tonnes. So that is where I first saw the potential of, of Canberra District Riesling. You only get one chance with making Riesling. It is so fussy. You've got your, your temperature fluctuations. You can almost ruin a wine very quickly. It keeps you up at night thinking about how you can make it better, I think. Canberra District Riesling maintains its acid really, really well. And the, it means that we're not adding artificial acid to, to the wines. And I think the wines come across as quite full, as in not made not bagged and also the other key is balance with with Riesling so you might have a little bit of residual sugar in there but that's to balance out the natural acidity but I just think they're just quite natural wines we don't find any of our wines we simply filter them and then they straight to bottle. The 2021 vintage was my 45th vintage 
So I've seen a lot of vintages, but still with Riesling, it's a very demanding mistress. If you make one mistake, she never forgives you. So every year is different because Rieslings are made in the vineyard. My job as a winemaker is I'm the custodian of the fruit. And it's up to me basically not to mess up what the vineyard has done. Along and west of the Barton Highway is, is a lot of granite country and you know, granite is probably the most influential in, in determining the profile of wines from you know, Wallaroo and Hall and, and generally through Murrumbateman and there's more probably you could say tension to those wines and yeah, there's something compelling that's hard to describe, but it, you know, in the Yass Valley you tend to have these fairly deep red loams and so you have you know, beautifully structured wines generally coming off vineyards in that area. It's a tiny bit warmer out there. Then further east you've got you know, all that shaley country, so generally very hard ground. The wines do it tough and you, you tend to have quite a muscular, meaty profile to the wine and the further east you go towards the Lake George Escarpment, it, it gets cooler and you know, the wines get a little bit finer in profile again. I love Shiraz from Cool Climate. I like those kind of peppery notes well, because of that continental aspect of, of the region. We got a fairly slow ripening of the Shiraz grapes. So we retain again a lot of acidity. We can, in a way, mature the tannins all the the polyphenol very slowly and not have those, those kind of big increase of sugar. Where it's very hot, the sugar level goes up and the tannins don't get right. I find here interesting in the fact that it's closer to what I know from France, where you can mature the tannins for much longer. So we discovered fairly early on that in this region, a cool climate region, just as there are similarities in climate and some of the soil geological elements with the Northern Rhone, perhaps we should borrow some of their well-honed techniques that they developed over centuries uh, over there in France. The classic thing that we're most famous for at Clonakilla is the inclusion of a little bit of Viognier, co-fermenting some of the white Viognier grape in with the Shiraz, usually about five or six percent. And of course, like many other things, we stole that from the French too. Uh, that's the classic blend of Cote Roti in the Northern Rhone Valley. Canberra Shiraz is, is a function of what the fruit in this area delivers and collectively what you know, the region's best winemakers have thrown at that fruit to tease out a style and communicate that style to the rest of the world. And generally it, it's hand harvested because whole bunch fermentation, carbonic maceration, stalk inclusion tend to work really well with uh, the fruit. So open fermentation in general with sort of pigeage and pumping over to extract flavour and tannin and importantly also stalk tannin which is part of having something really chew on in the mid palate, in, not in a, in a coarse or difficult way but in, in a very pleasing and sort of moorish way you have that really nice um, stalk tannin in the mid palate. With Shiraz uh, use a wild fermentation and whole bunches in the, in the fermentation and they help to provide layers of, of interest and complexity to the wine. Uh, we do make a Mr Natural Shiraz um, and we're really trying to capture the, the purest expression of the vineyard with that wine. So there's no, no fermentation aids, we uh, don't find the wine, uh, it's very minimal filtering and, and just a really small amount of sulphur dioxide at bottling uh, and get it into bottle uh, as quick as we can as well with that one. I honestly think that we we will be seeing a lot more of our, our district's wines being showcased overseas and showing the Germans what we've got. <laughs> and I think it's more what's happening in the Canberra region with the winemakers here that more changed the wine and food scene in, in Canberra itself. Uh, I just think we're kind of at the beginning of, of coming to understand uh, the potential uh, for this region and sort of the products that we're making here, the food that we're growing, the wines that we're making, the olive oil that we've got now, the truffles that people are growing. You know, people have got this curiosity about what can this region produce when we take the time to listen to our environment, to, to listen to the heartbeat of the landscape, if you like, and try and capture that 
and express that through all these different means, through fibres, through food, through wine, through culture, through community. You know, it's, it's the beginning of uh, something which is just going to grow and become more and more um, meaningful to us and celebrated, I think. It's an exciting time to be living in the Canberra region.